A community gathering space for Garen residents is making strides after some weather delays earlier this summer. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me in our top story. Earlier this year, the Gearing City Council approved more than $900,000 for it, and crews working on phase two of the Gearing Civic Plaza on 11th Street say it's shaping up nicely. Anderson Shaw Project Manager Brandon Rywich explains. Well, right now we're uh, working on getting going on uh, the concrete and the fence that's going to be going around the building. Uh, been trying to play catch up with the weather. Weather this year has been crazy to say the least, but we're working through it and now that things are kind of drying up, we're able to get some dirt moved and instead of mud and it's going well. Uh, we were able to finish up all the block work in the main terrace last week, so now we're just kind of getting ready to move into the dirt work. Uh, today going into this week, we had fence posts staked out this morning as they'll all get lighting on the top of them and then we'll work on the underground, all that fence post, and then fencing going into the next week. And then as soon as that, we'll be doing concrete. It's gonna be nice once it's all said and done. I think it's gonna be a big addition to the city of Gearing, and I look forward to seeing it completed. Phase two of the Gearing Civic Plaza is expected to be completed by August 31st. Well, the United Way of Western Nebraska's biggest fundraiser is tomorrow, but on Thursday night, a final push for duck sales for the annual Rubber Duck Dash took place at Team Auto Center. The annual Quackers and Cheese Business After Hours featured lots of decorated ducks and attendees were encouraged to vote for their favorites as well as buy their last minute quack sacks. United Way Board President Doug Mader explains why this Business After Hours event is so important. One, it's a fun event. It's a good thing to do on a Thursday night. Uh, great prizes, uh, great food, great, um, just a great chance to buy ducks, wrap everything up so that Saturday when we find our 30 winning ducks coming out of a cement truck this year because the river is so high, we, uh, we make a big impact in terms of the amount of money that we raise. Duck Dash festivities will begin on Saturday at 930 at the YMCA Trails West Camp. And due to those high river levels, the ducks will be racing out of a cement truck rather than down the North Platte. Well, straight ahead, another hot one out there today, but things will cool down considerably tomorrow. Bill Boyer's got your weekend weather forecast right after this on KNEB.TV News. At Platte Valley Bank, we understand that you have a busy life, and that means you don't always have time to come to the bank. That's why we offer user-friendly online and mobile banking with features such as iPay, recurring transfers, and mobile deposit. So you can bank how you want, when you want to. Whether you prefer to bank in person, over the phone, or online, Platte Valley Bank makes it easy to take care of your finances. Run with us in the unstoppable John Deere Gator XUV 835 and be prepared to go the extra mile because when others take rain checks, we take the wheel. With three wide seating, heat, and AC, this is the coolest, most comfortable Gator yet. Nothing runs like a deer. Run with us. Visit 21st Century Equipment with locations in Scotts Bluff, Torrington, Bridgeport, and Alliance. If I said everything you need to know about Arby's Ultimate BLT is right there in the name, how would that make the honey wheat bread feel? Probably not great. Arby's, we have the meat for sandwiches. This is KNEB.TV weather from the Arby's Weather Center. Arby's, we have the meat. Not a bad looking evening out there, but things are changing. Look at this, still 93 by 7 o'clock, but by 9 tomorrow morning, we're only going to be in the upper 60s. Much cooler weather is on the way. So a cold front is coming. It is going to be much much cooler, 30 degrees cooler in some areas tomorrow from where we were today. A couple of showers, although I wouldn't hang our hat on all of us getting wet. Warmer conditions are coming mid to late next week. Again, get right back to where we were. A little toasty yesterday, 102. Missed that record by two degrees though, uh, of 104 set back in 2006. Nothing in the rain gauge, uh, right at three inches above normal still for the year. Well, we've got some changes coming. I told you big changes are coming. We have a cold front off to the north here. 
uh, right now and it is going to slide to the south. You'll see it head to the south here as we go through the 10 11 o'clock hour and then early tomorrow. Look at these temperatures to be kept at bay tomorrow. Here's these 90s and 100s shoved to the south and by tomorrow evening that cold front still keeps pushing across the region pushes that to, uh, warmer temperatures well to the south and by tomorrow afternoon we're going to be much cooler here in our region. Certainly much cooler than where we are right now. Uh, upper 90s to low 100. Speaking of 100s, here's 101 in Hayes, 102 in McCook, 100 right now in North Platte. We'll pay attention to the other side of the state here in a moment. Uh, look at some of this though here. 100 degrees in Ogallala, 89 though in Gordon, 90 up in Chadron, so a little cooler uh, in some of those areas. Look at these heat indices though. 80s and low 90s here for our area. 101 heat indice right now in Sterling. 109 in North Platte, 108 in McCook, 110 on the eastern part of the state. That oppressive heat is going to finally break uh, tomorrow late in the day when this cold front pushes through the region. Upper 90s and low 100s for heat indices here in our area. Best chance of severe tonight going to be up in the uh, Great Lakes area. We have a marginal risk of severe storms. Can't rule out an isolated storm here in the northeastern panhandle into north central Nebraska. Chances are going to be pretty slim. Tomorrow we push that severe threat further off to the south and Sunday it uh, is completely away from us with no major issues of severe weather coming on Sunday. So for tonight, watch what happens as we go through the evening hours. Here comes that cold front from the north and east. Notice by 9 o'clock you start to see some of those winds back in here to the region. Uh, by early tomorrow morning we're going to start to see the clouds come in with that cold front as well. Temperatures are going to fall tonight, but uh, not uh, too far down into the upper 60s, low to mid 60s for some of us. Now take a look at what happens for tomorrow. We have sun or clouds and some wind off to the north. Here comes those clouds pushing through. Winds are going to stay pretty gusty with us all day at times. Not going to be overly uh, windy, but it's going to feel cool with those north winds coming out of the north northeast and a little gusty at times 10 to 20 miles an hour, ushering in cooler air. By tomorrow evening, we see a few showers try to form off to our west. They're going to have a hard time making it across most of our region, except uh, here to the south and east. That area just southeast of our area is going to be uh, pretty wet, I think, tomorrow late in the day. Look at tomorrow's high, 69 in Lusk, 72 in Kimball. That's going to be almost 30 degrees colder than where we were today for a high tomorrow. And rainfall going to be pretty slim pickings. A few areas picking up a couple of hundreds. Notice here in uh, Lincoln County, down into portions of South Central Nebraska, they're going to do much better with rain and thunderstorm chances there. Mostly clear tonight, lows around 65 tomorrow, much cooler. Highs only in the upper 70s, mid 70s for some of us. Northeast winds at 10 to 20, going to make it feel even cooler, but it is going to suck that humidity out of the air for a couple of days for us. Upper 70s again on Sunday with a lot of clouds around. Monday looks uh, partly cloudy in the low 80s, and then we're back into the 90s as we get Tuesday through Friday of next week. Not much doing out there uh, for decent rainfall chances over the next seven days. If a sandwich needs a little something extra, you add bacon to it. If a sandwich is perfect just the way it is, you add bacon to it. Arby's, we have the meat. KNEB presents country music rising star, Dylan Scott. I'm Friday, August 16th at the historic Midwest Theater in Scotts Bluff. Presented by Allo Communications and Vieira Wireless. Tickets are on sale now at the Midwest Theater box office by phone at 632-4311 or at MidwestTheater.com. Dylan Scott, August 16th at the historic Midwest Theater in Scotts Bluff with KNEB. This chair is way too big. It's perfect for us. This one's tiny. That's because it's mine. Hey, this chair is just right. This bed is way too hard. It's perfect for me. This bed is way too soft. Ah, uh, just what I needed. This bed is just right. So come on over to Leaf Heads. Why do we work all hours of the night? Head towards challenges instead of turning away and work together to solve the toughest problems so you can enjoy the little things <laughs> and all the big moments life has to offer. Tri-State and our family of electric cooperatives. Brighter, stronger, better together. 
Quebec. A 25-year-old Gehring man has been arraigned on charges relating to a fatal accident that occurred on May 5th. Cole Russell has been charged with misdemeanor motor vehicle homicide and reckless driving. Police say 69-year-old Donald Wimberly of Gehring was struck by Russell's vehicle after he had pulled over to check on a trailer he was towing on 7th Street. Russell reportedly rear-ended Wimberly's trailer and hit Wimberly, who died seven weeks later from the injuries sustained in the accident. This morning in court, Russell pleaded not guilty to the charges. Well, Western Nebraska Community College has announced that they've hired three new administrators, including John Marin as Interim Executive Vice President, Dr. Patrick Fortney as Associate Dean of Instruction, and Jacqueline Smith as Alliance Campus Director. Dr. John Harms, who is serving as WNCC's Interim President amid a nationwide search for a new president, says that bringing three new strategic minds of this caliber is great news for WNCC. The college is hoping to have a new president hired by the start of the second semester. And Nebraska state government collected more tax revenue than expected during the fiscal year that ended last month. The Nebraska Department of Revenue reported this week that net tax receipts for the year totaled $4.896 billion, which was 3.7% above the official state forecast. The department says net individual and corporate income taxes were higher than expected, as were net sales and use and miscellaneous taxes. Net tax receipts were also higher than projected in June, which is the last month of the fiscal year. The projections were set by the Nebraska Economic Forecasting Advisory Board back in February, and lawmakers rely on the board's estimates each year when setting or adjusting the state budget. Well, straight ahead, Bryce and Alex will be in with your Friday Five. They'll have that right after this on KNEB.TV News. Are you ready to join the celebration? Then what are you waiting for? Switch to Viero today and find out exactly why we're better. More towers than the competition, convenient stores in your neighborhood, friendly, helpful customer service, and top phones at excellent values, such as the iPhone XR for free. That's right, get a free iPhone XR when you purchase any other iPhone of equal or greater value. Viero Wireless, your better choice for wireless service. Find out what convenient really means at the Western Travel Terminal. Start with our great selection of food and drinks from for real milkshakes and fresh brewed coffee to snacks and hot food. Next, check out our beer and spirits with their everyday low prices. Finally, let us work for you with our full service gas station and automatic truck and car wash. All this can be found at 822 South Beltline in Scotts Bluff. Western Travel Terminal, your convenient shopping, restaurant and full service gas leader. carrying fame. Get your Husker Visa debit card so you can take the game with you. Free with first free checking. This is KNEB TV Ag News from the First National Bank Ag Desk. First National Bank of North Platte. The bank to think of first. Hemp, hot temperatures, and hot dogs made the headlines this week, and we have those details. Those stories and more are coming up in this edition of Friday Five, presented by Nebraska Corn Board. As Saturday marks 50 years since Apollo 11 astronauts landed on the moon, the National Hot Dog and Sausage Council celebrated one of the first foods eaten by Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin Jr. on their monumental mission. Wednesday marked National Hot Dog Day, and while the hot dogs served on the moon were specially produced for a reduced gravity environment, 
today there are earthbound hot dogs for everyone with millions of different possible hot dog toppings and combinations. A standard beef hot dog is 190 calories and offers 7 grams of protein and 30% of our daily value of vitamin B12. Moving on, Corn Congress was held in Washington, D.C. this week where corn farmers from across the nation discuss policy and issues that are important to producers and agriculture as a whole. At the event, U.S. Senator Deb Fisher was awarded the President's Award from the National Corn Growers Association. This award is presented to a leader who has worked to advance issues that are important to corn growers and agriculture as a whole. NCGA says that Senator Fisher has been an advocate for year-round sales of E15, and in her remarks, she also spoke about the pending U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement. Number three this week, 176 applications were submitted to the Nebraska Department of Agriculture for a state hemp license. 132 of those after combining for the same location. Of those 132, only 10 applications were drawn at random to actually receive a license. Director of Ag Steve Wellman said that 10 was all the state could handle based on human and financial resources. And one of those 10 was granted to the Ho-Chunk Farms, which is owned by the Winnebago Tribe. That farm will grow, start growing hemp this summer on the reservation. They'll start with 5.5 acres of hemp, and they say they expect planting to start in the coming weeks. Moving on, Wisconsin Senator Tammy Baldwin is calling on President Trump to stop making false claims regarding China purchasing U.S. ag products. In a letter, she wrote that exaggerated claims about export opportunities make doing business and agriculture difficult. Last month, the president claimed Mexico had agreed to immediately begin buying large quantities of ag products from U.S. farmers and more recently claiming that China would buy ag products. But so far, there's been no evidence for details supporting those claims and trade experts say no agreement on ag products exists. And finally this week, well, if you haven't noticed, it's hot. Like, really hot out. <laughs> it's really hot. This June was the hottest June in 140 years of temperature records, that according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Us humans are not the only creatures trying to beat the heat, as agriculture producers know. Beef veterinarians from across the Midwest are urging producers to not only provide more water to animals, but consider providing uh, most of the cattle feed later in the day to help reduce digestive heat. According to Kansas State, the beef industry loses an estimated $369 million each year due to the effects of heat stress. You can beat the heat this weekend by celebrating National Ice Cream Day. That's on Sunday. And be sure to stay tuned to next week on our Friday Five as we celebrate ice cream. That's it for this week's episode brought to you by the Nebraska Corn Board. Stay cool and have a great weekend. This is Mike. Mike likes his car. Mike likes to save money. And Mike likes to breathe. So Mike fills up with E15 with 15% American ethanol. The clean octane in E15 gives Mike the performance he wants from his engine and the clean air he wants for his family. Better yet, E15 costs less at the pump. Higher octane, cleaner air, lower cost. E15 sure gives Mike a lot to like. Discover E15 with American ethanol. You said yes. Together, you planned every detail. You married. And then you realized 500 square feet just isn't enough room for two. When life happens, find a home that fits. First National Bank North Platte. Start your mortgage pre-approval today. You decide to add another to your family. You start reading parenting books. You're amazed that such a small human could need so much space. When life happens, find a home that fits. First National Bank North Platte. Start your mortgage pre-approval today. U.S. National Hot Air Balloon Championship lands in western Nebraska. Starting August 12th, there will be 50 balloons color in the sky. Then on the 16th and 17th, 30 Old West Balloon Fest pilots take flight. Can't make it to the morning launches? Enjoy one of two night glow options, August 15th at WNCC or the 17th at Five Rocks Amphitheater. There will be a kids' education zone and tethered rides for kids 12 and under. The morning launches at Mitchell Airfield. To learn more about the national competition and the Old West Balloon Fest, visit theoldwestballoonfest.com. The 5055E from John Deere features the value of choice with a cab or open station, two-wheel drive or mechanical front-wheel drive, and transmission options. In addition to easy-to-use controls and loader compatibility, all of this is backed with a five-year powertrain warranty. The only thing easier than owning a 5E is operating one. See your John Deere dealer for details. Visit 21st Century Equipment with locations in Scottsbluff, Torrington, Bridgeport, and Alliance. When it comes to helping local folks with the loans and financial advice they need, we don't horse around. Our only goal is to help you and your family achieve your financial goals with the right loans and savings products. 
So if you want to bank with people that care about you and your financial needs, stop by or give us a call. First State Bank. We're big on you. Member FDIC. Online at fsbcentral.com. Well, let's take a peek at what's happening on your weekend community calendar. That's a look at today's community calendar brought to you by First State Bank, honoring those who give back. Nominate your community champion at fsbcentral.com. That's a look at today's community calendar brought to you by First State Bank, honoring those who give back. Nominate your community champion at fsbcentral.com. On April 15, 1924, West Nebraska Methodist Episcopal Hospital, the region's first modern hospital, opened in downtown Scotts Bluff. The goal was to provide the care residents needed close to home, and it's never changed. For 95 years, we've continued to provide exceptional health care for generations of families throughout our region as a community hospital, a regional referral center, and a level two trauma center. Thank you for trusting your health care to Regional West Medical Center. The growth and prosperity of our community is dependent on the reinvestment of local dollars into our local economy. When you open a high interest savings account at Platte Valley Bank, we turn around and loan your money back to our community for new construction, business expansion, home loans, in backing agriculture, and much more. Come save with us at Platte Valley Bank and know that you are doing business with a local bank with local decisions that reinvests your money here in our community. And finally tonight, downtown Scotts Bluff is lined with merchandise from downtown retailers for their annual sidewalk sales. Each summer, a majority of the businesses on Broadway haul a selection of their merchandise from their store and onto the sidewalks. The warm temperatures we're experiencing have also helped in a way because it's luring customers into the air-conditioned stores. Nancy Dillman, owner of TC and More, says she loves the annual sidewalk sales because it helps her showcase the store offerings to their faithful regulars and new customers alike. For the downtown businesses or any business, it's a good way to get rid of your older merchandise to make room for the new merchandise for the ho holidays. And it just generates a good positive um, flow of business. We're getting rid of older merchandise, so the customers can take advantage of that. The sidewalk sales will continue through Saturday and people are encouraged to head on downtown and patronize your locally owned businesses. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great weekend and we'll see you back here on Monday.